Good afternoon. Thank you to Thank you for joining us today and welcome to our final version of the Agriculture Challenges webinar. Today we will be talking about weaning calves. Um, before we get started, I'm going to go over a couple housekeeping items. Um, one, if you're not speaking, please mute your mic so we don't get feedback from you. Um, and then secondly, we will be holding all questions until the end of the webinar. Um, so you can either type them in the chat box and we'll make sure that they get addressed at that time or you can ask them um, through your audio at that time. So as we all know, there's been a lot of challenges this fall. Um, one of them being um, with the conditions that weaning has been delayed. And so folks are looking for some different methods and are having to do things in a different way than they normally do. And so we have three of our extension livestock specialists joining us today to talk about some of those considerations. Our first speaker is going to be Yuri Montaholi. He is our beef cattle specialist, and he's going to be talking about um, some background on weaning and some different methods for weaning. All right. Thanks, Miranda. It's a pleasure to be uh, here today and also taking my time to think about uh, good reasons for weaning and also weaning methods. I think this is a very relevant topic. Um, Yes, and uh, weaning is a is a, a management um, procedure that uh, will be part of the the production of beef cattle. Uh, it can be done in in a diverse of manners, and uh, each of those has their advantages and disadvantages, and uh, are suitable to different production systems and uh, and realities of each farm. So, exploring some of those uh, aspects are are quite important. I did take my time for searching for a good definition of a winning in the dictionary that would be applicable to a cattle perspective and I, and I failed on that. So I ended up uh, creating uh, an adaptation on that. I think that makes a little more sense uh, from a beef perspective. So it would be the winning would be the process of causing a calf to stop feeding on its uh, mother's milk to rely completely on other sources of feed and to live without the cow's company, uh, at least temporarily, for the purpose of beef cattle farming. So I think that makes a little more sense for our, um, for our industry. And uh, interestingly, uh, weaning doesn't mean that uh, is, is, is an interruption between the bond between a cow and a calf. Uh, I'm sure that farmers have a lot of hist uh, uh, stories to share of uh, cows and calves that uh, after weaning, they still have a, a, an affection relationship. And that's quite interesting when you see a cow herd, when you see like the, the kind of families uh, together. And this drawing here is, is an example of uh, a cow that has her uh, daughter uh, that's uh, nursing her and the older daughter that's being groomed. So um, it is an interesting aspect of that as well. So why should be winning the calves? I think that uh, one of the biggest uh, points would be to improve the efficiency of nutrient utilization. So um, going back to the roots on this, like uh, when you think about livestock, you really think about like uh, producing uh, products using solar uh, energy. Uh, and uh, through that process, you'll be growing, growing our uh, pastures and grains and all the feed stuff and then feeding to a cow. Uh, of course, the, the young cow uh, is greatly benefited by consuming the milk from the cow and that's why the cow produces it. Uh, however, uh, in the way that we produce cattle, uh, we can be winning the animals in before the cow uh, stop producing milk. And that can be a quite efficient manner of sparing um, uh, feed, uh, feed stuff and, and energy. Uh, I apologize here for this little um, rabbit here. It's supposed to be a calf. I just couldn't find a calf, so then I put the rabbit. I even trimmed the ear so it looks more like a calf. Uh, but basically, uh, when, when you break that uh, and start feeding the calf directly, feed stuff, you are more efficient from, from, from a feed utilization perspective. By doing that, uh, we also it is important like for saving uh, for spare reserves in the cows and help them to gain body condition. And I think this uh, this year in particular are very important because uh, many farmers uh, and producers are short of feed. So if they can spare energy in the cow, that's quite beneficial. 
Similarly, like um, when you're winning, when you win the calves from the cows, you, uh, the cows can be fed like a poor quality ration then, or feed stuff than the calves. So then can be split in that and use the nutrients like more wisely uh, in the farm. And of course that by winning, you also enable us to be selling the, the cool cows and moving forward with the cows, either like uh, for backgrounding or for selling to another farmer. So that's also important part of that. And the success of how this procedure has a lot to do with how we do the weaning. So that's like uh, one key aspect, aspect of this. And there are quite a few different procedures and variants on how we, we, you, how we win the, the calves. I'll be going through three main types. And uh, I put this kind of a medieval picture here of this thing full of spikes, just to remind myself that uh, the less suffering, the less Rodeo, the less running around that you have uh, when you're doing your weaning procedure, the better be for the cow, the better be for the calf, and the better be for the farmer's pocket. So uh, the smoother, the better. And I'm sure that farmers uh, agree on that. So no need of that type of stuff. And we start with the traditional, the Kural winning. I don't know if there is a different name for this uh, type of winning uh, in North Dakota, but it is a very popular type of winning. And basically under this scenario, cows and calves are abruptly separated. Uh, a lot of times calves are kept in, on, on, on familiar places like a nov novelty uh, aspect. And also calves are supposed to commingle. And I'm sure that uh, Dr. Stock will be talk a little more about commingling in a few minutes. Um, as you can hear, uh, this process is related to excessive bowling. And uh, I, I found a very, very easy video to show this. There are some scenarios that I'm sure that farmers would be without sleep for a couple of days in a row. And uh, this type of winning is also is related to triggering uh, other, other type of stress responses. However, it is considered practical uh, by, many, by many people. A lot of times, to be sincere in this, uh, the animals are winning and drug at, at the same day. So there are some uh, considerations about that, but that's one of the methods. And uh, in the past, like a couple years ago, I did a research on this type of winning. I was really interested to learn how much does the winning, uh, the cruel winning method impact the well-being of calves? And I did something very simple. I first, I measured the cortisol level on those animals at winning and then three days later, and also checked the weights at winning and three days later. And you could observe that uh, the cortisol levels increasing about 75% within three days. And uh, those animals on average, they lost 18 pounds each uh, within three days. So that is uh, a considerable loss. It has a, a lot of repercussions for the long-term uh, productivity of that animal and also for the farmer's pocket. And another type of weaning that's a bit more popular, it is um, a defense, fence line weaning. So basically, as the name implies, cow and calves are, are split into adjacent fields. Uh, they can see and sniff each other, but suckling uh, is not possible. Um, I found like some recommendations of people use a five bar barbed wire proselectrical to make sure that uh, they don't get together again. And gradually, as the days goes by, uh, cow and calf lose the interest in each other. Uh, and then after that, the cows can be moved to another place. And there are some interesting handling considerations about this. I did find an article uh, on a, a homepage, it's called the uh, On Pasture. Uh, that really describes the management like in ranches uh, for that, like how, the, how to move the horses, how, how much room we need to have from the cows and calves to do that in a very smooth manner. And if you had a chance to check it out, please uh, take a look. It's very well written, like in a very good uh, type of wording uh, that rangers will certainly enjoy that. And then the third method I want to talk to you will be the nose flap winning, also called the tube step winning. This is becoming more and more popular and basically consists of uh, placing a temporary uh, plastic flap uh, around the calf's nose. It allows the calf to drink water and to, to grass or to eat from the bunk, but not nurse. So he cannot get the milk from the cow. Uh, it's normally removed within a week. Some people do three or four days, depending on the system. And it does require res restraining the calf twice to put the, the flap and to remove, which for some people m could see that as a drawback. And there are some limitations for large calves, like uh, sometimes the flaps are not 
big enough for the larger calves, but yes. And also there's some comments or some discussion about uh, the flaps that have spikes. Uh, so far, I couldn't find a single uh, evidence supporting that the, the flaps should have uh, spikes. It seems that the smoother ones just look work as good. So I think that uh, they can we can go without those spikes. And just for wrapping up uh, this presentation, this is a extension material from the University of Tennessee, uh, where they compare the fence line, the two-step winning with the flap, and also the curl winning, uh, just the curl winning or the curl winning with the horn at the same time. And just to save time, I wanted to go to the very last column here, where I have the overall gain over 58 days post winning. And then you can see that both the fence line and the two-step win, they have very compar comparable uh, gains uh, over that period. And then uh, when we did the Kuro winning, um, just the Kuro winning, we had like uh, about 30 pounds less gain over that period. And then when we had the Kuro winning uh, associated with the, the horning, there was uh, another loss of 20 pounds, 20 pounds. So you're, you talk about a range of 30 to 50 pounds here that can be gaining in your calves according to the type of winning that you use. So I think this is quite relevant and can touch really hard on people's uh, pockets and hearts too. And that's all that I have. And uh, if you have any question, please uh, seek for support of your county agent and also feel free to contact me if I can help with anything else. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. Our next speaker is Dr. Jerry Stucka, and he is going to uh, the extension veterinarian here in Fargo, and he's going to be talking about health concerns during weaning. Yeah, thanks, Miranda. I hope everyone can hear me. Thanks, Yuri. I just, uh, just to follow up a little bit on Yuri's comments about fence line weaning, there is actually what we call pen line weaning or corral line weaning as well. So you can separate those cows and calves in a pen and have the cows on the outside of the pen and that works pretty well too. I know so a number of our producers do that. So, well, let me just make a few remarks about weaning management and more as it relates to, to health. So I think about weaning and the risks involved with, with weaning and the stressors that come, come with it. And, and one of the big ones that we oftentimes forget about, at least on on the ranch of origin of these calves is that in most ranching operations, these cattle are not in the same pastures all summer long. So when I bring calves in from different pastures, and I separate the calves and the cows, and all the calves now go together that haven't been together throughout the summer grazing season, I in introduce a little bit of what I call a psychological stress because those calves end up having to kind of reestablish pecking order within that new larger group and it does cause some stress in those calves and, and I would say this from my observations it's probably the number one stress that brings on respiratory disease in, in wean calves it's this commingling effect so always think about that and we'll talk about that in the next slide how we might alleviate some of that commingling stress that occurs from different pastures uh, pen conditions can be a stressor too, and now the ground is frozen, so you may have some really hard, sharp surfaces on the pen. Um, you know, if possible to smooth them out, you know, with a, either with a blade or some type of scraper, it would, it would help to alleviate some of those conditions that can lead to things like uh, lameness and foot rot and that sort of thing. Yuri already talked about the procedures themselves, and any way you wean calves, Keep in mind that low stress methods of separating and sorting and, and keeping cattle and calves and cows apart from one another really contributes to reducing the overall stress. And, and really it relates to a calf losing the companionship of its mother and also the nursing, the nursing stress that, that you've now allowed to happen. And so one of the, the reasons that no slaps work so well is that it it removes one of those stressors and it's, it removes that pacifier effect, if you will, uh, in those calves. So every every little thing here is, is a, a stress on those calves and, and doing it in a, in a manner that kind of reduces the risk from those stressors makes a difference in those calves. And finally, just a couple comments about vaccination. The philosophy of vaccination should be that it has to be necessary. In other words, 
the vaccine, the hole that I'm going to put into the hide of an animal carries an antigen or a, an organism that it's necessary for me to vaccinate for because there's a risk there and there's enough evidence that tells me that it works. In other words, it's effective and finally that it's safe to use. It's a pretty simple philosophy to follow and, and I highly recommend that you visit with your veterinarian about exactly what that protocol is. So the next slide here is just some options as to reduce that, some of the stressors that we talked about. Colder weather will firm pens. We already talked about that. And scraping pens can, can smooth out some of those rough edges. Remember, you can still move manure because most of the time the manure is not, not solid yet. We still have some days here that will keep it from freezing for, uh, to that firm stage. Provide in-pen bedding. If you're weaning in pens, if you're corral line or pen line weaning, Make sure you got bedding in there, whether it's full or straw or something that insulates that ground from that calf really can make a difference for, for calf comfort. And I would argue vaccinating calves while they're still with the, the mother is the preferred method. If you're weaning tomorrow, it's it's a little late. It's not that you can't wean, it's not that you can't vaccinate when the calves are weaned. You're just adding one little more stressful event into that calf's life. And now you've got separation, you've got loss of milk, you may have commingling, and I'm going to vaccinate them at the same time. So that's kind of four stressors put together. And the other way to, I, I mentioned earlier that the, the number one stressor that I see in calves in, in larger ranches is this commingling stress that occurs. When you put this group together all in one big group. And, and the way to, to alleviate, if you can and if management allows, is actually feed those cows and calves together at least for a number of days. I don't have the magic number. It might be four days, it might be seven days, it might be longer depending on how large of an area you're feeding these cattle into. And, and that also allows those calves to, to learn how to eat so that you've removed another stressor from that situation. So those are some things that are available to you. Finally, I, I just want to point this out. And, most of us that wean calves, our expectation is to pull basically none, but certainly less than 5% of the group should experience any post weaning illness from BRD and respiratory disease. And this, this little cartoon here is just a way of thinking about what are the signs and symptoms of sick cattle. Cattle that are off by themselves, cattle that have diarrhea, cattle have a hard time breathing. If you get into this stage, it's too late. They're running high fevers and these are just little cartoon characters exhibiting different signs and symptoms that cattle might demonstrate if they're not feeling well. And that's not always related to respiratory disease. It can be related to other illnesses as well. Just another thing too, once the calves are weaned and the bell rings out of them, and, and they're not seeking after their mother and they're feeding them, and there's no problem with putting those calves off the bigger ground. They can be fed pretty easily on top ground and so spread them out a little bit, that's always a little better. Maybe they can take a little more about their world. So thanks a lot. Appreciate the opportunity to visit with you just a little bit about weaning management. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. So our next speaker is going to be Dr. Carl Hoppe. Um, he is the Livestock Systems Specialist at the Carrington Research Extension Center. And he's going to be talking about some of the challenges with the conditions and weaning um, this year. Good afternoon. Welcome. Yes, the opportunity to wean calves. There's always issues that show up and we'd like to visit a little bit with them today. There's always behavioral issues at weaning time. Calves are such social creatures. They're with cattle and they have that herd instinct that just creates a, an environment where they want to be together. And when you separate them across from each other, calves will, even if the cow is on the other side of the fence, the calf will still walk the fence looking for the cow or looking for some type of uh, um, reaffirmant that they are not totally separated away from the rest of the herd. Of course, calves will beller and bawl, try to make some type of noise, which if they continue to do that can really wrestle up the rest of the calves and create everybody at a certain uneasiness of what's going on. And trying to reduce that will certainly help uh, uh, ease the transition to full weaning. 
Um, calves in unfamiliar locations, we talked about it earlier. We'll definitely have to figure out where new things are at. Um, if they've never seen a feed bunk before, that'll be a new experience. If they've never drinking out of that particular water, it will be a new experience. Even the type of feed they're provided will be a new experience for the calves. And we'll talk a little bit about that. I like to remind myself that calves like to adapt or animals like to adapt to one thing at a time. So if they got a new surrounding, they shouldn't have new types of feeds to eat. They should know where the water is and they should figure out uh, feed the same type of uh, feed they have been eating out of the same type of feed that they're used to. Being weaned was just enough of a stress right there. So the question I always run into when weaning calves is are they adapted to the feed bunk and the feed? So there's two different things going on here. First, if the calves have been out in pasture with a creep feeder, they figured out what a creep feeder is and what they're eating. And if you take that same creep feeder and put it into a pen when the calves are weaned, the stress of figuring out where the feed, extra feed is at is a lot limited. Um, that's not the case if calves have never seen a creep feeder out on pasture and then that creep feeder is placed into the pen with the calves at weaning time. A couple issues are going on then. They're not used to the feeder. They don't know what the feed is. They haven't seen that type of feed. And if they get hungry, they might overconsume. So some type of limiter should really be used in that type of situation or at least avoid um, making those types of changes. I like to think that we need to teach our calves how to eat and when to eat. It's good that mother does it, the cow does it, but when we wean the calf, we take on that role of trying to introduce the calves what's going on. So one way to approach this is to feed the cows the same type of feed the calves are gonna get prior to weaning. So if the calves have never seen silage before, and it's this time of year and you have a silage pile, feed the cows some silage. They don't have to get a full ration. They don't have to have complete replacement for everything else that's going on out in the field, but at least they'll eat some feed and the calves will observe that. They'll see the smell, they'll know what's going on and they'll come to it later when they're weaned. Distillers grains is the same way, even grain, like corn grain. A mouthful of corn grain goes a long way in teaching the calf that it's good things to eat, but he just doesn't know how to eat it in the first place. If you provide some of that to the cow, that'd certainly work out. Now, a last thought here would be, calves are used to eating the same type well, they're out on pasture, so whatever they're grazing, if it's going to be bluegrass or brome grass or some type of cover crop grass, whatever that is, that's what the calves would like to eat when they're weaned because that's what they're used to. If you're going to be feeding them, if they're out grazing an alfalfa field because it's froze off and you give them alfalfa, there might be an okay transition there, but please be aware that overconsumption of alfalfa on a hungry calf could lead to bloating, so sometimes we don't want to create more problems by how we feed them than. Uh, just weaning. So fence line feed bunks are a great thing. Totally mixed rations uh, work very well. We can have step up rations that uh, increase the amount of grain in the ration. So when you first start off, please put long stem hay in the feed bunk and then pour some of the totally mixed ration on top of it. Adjust the ration so it's high in fiber content, low in grain content, so you don't have any of that digestive upset going on. Feed bunks are great. You can feed them from the outside of the pen. You don't have to fight with calves, but they now have to learn how to eat out of a feed bunk. If you've got good cattle that don't put their head through a fence line, through a fence out on pasture, you've done well. But feed bunks are such that cattle have to stick their head through a fence. So it's a different deal. And once you get your head through the fence, you might be the temptation to keep on crawling. And uh, once you get calves crawled out of a fence line feed bunk, you find out separating them may not be so easy putting them back in, especially if you've got 30 head out of 1,000 cows out running around the calves get back in with the cows that's no small chore to have that be done so one of the options we have is to put feed bunks in the pen where the calves are at and feed a totally mixed ration in the pen the other option we have is to have hay feeders like hay rings with round bales put into them so calves that have adequate access to the same type of hay that they have been eating and uh, then put a tmr in a bunk either on the fence line feed bunk or out on the side but then at some point you're going to have to teach the calves that the hay ring is not the ration. The ration is what's in the is what's in the feed bunk, and that's what they need to have. Water location is an issue. Can be. Um, I always remember the point of uh, in some of our other livestock species that they may have never seen an automatic water, so just the hissing of water is a scary activity. Sometimes, in order to get through it, they might have to create a a stream of water through the pen just get the calves to drink just get animals to drink well calves aren't that stupid they usually figure out where it is and it might be placed in the fence line or in the middle of the pen please note though if it's in the fence line calves on the other side of the fence that might have any snotty noses or whatever would could share that 
with the calves that are drinking all the same water on this side of the fence. So biosecurity might be one of those issues you may have to deal with. So ration changes are an important thing. We need to adapt cattle slowly. Did I say slowly? Let's adapt them very slow. If you're gonna increase the average daily gain of, in the ration or of a calf, you need to increase the energy content of the ration. And you usually do that with grain. Grain is loaded with starch. And if we provide too much starch at one time, that can lead to acidosis, bloat, death, it can turn into a bad deal. Um, we try to avoid that and it's a management issue because you provided too much starch at one time, we need to slowly adapt the cattle. So if you're gonna feed grain and you're gonna bunk feed, like, like this picture down below, provide with only half a pound, half a percent of body weight of grain for the calf. So you've got a five weight calf that's only two and a half pounds of grain and then increase the grain a pound every two to three days as cattle adapt, or you might take five days depending upon how well cattle adapt. And adapting isn't just cattle consuming, adapting is them coming up the feed bunk and eating as well. Part of those calves could, um, out of a pen of 100, 50 might come up the feed bunk and eat, and the other 50 are still wandering around wondering what's in the feed bunk. Well, those first 50 might eat five pounds of feed rather than two and a half. Five should not be a problem, but we certainly don't want to give them uh, 10 pounds of grain, that would lead to uh, too much grain overload and lead to acidosis. Um, yeah, again, the calves aren't coming up the feed bunk, certainly don't increase the grain on the ration and the amount of grain delivered to the cattle. We need everybody to come up to eat. Think about ration preparedness. Sometimes calves might get sick and antibiotics are a reasonable approach to help uh, a large group of calves. It's only a small group of calves are sick, individual treatment's always a great idea. But if we need to treat the whole pen, this will require a veterinary feed directive from your veterinarian that you have uh, experience that has experience with your herd and you. Um, they'll need you'll need to have a VFD be taken to the feed supplier in order to purchase antibiotics if you're going to mix them with the feed, and that's just a given now. You have to follow label directions for the feed or the prescription that's provided, or the, I should call the veterinary feed directive that's provided by the veterinarian. Please note though that. This does not apply to the onophores, urensin, or bovitec, or coccidiostats, like gourd or decoids. It refers to things like oxytetracycline, or chlorotetracycline, or uh, pomatil, or those types of feed-type antibiotics that can be provided by a veterinarian prescription or the veterinary feed directive. Here's a parting thought for you. As you're putting calves on feed after weaning, look at the manure. Manure can give you a good idea how the calves are consuming and how they're performing. You definitely don't want to have diarrhea. If you see that going on, you've either got a very laxative type hay or that's moving right through, highly digestible, or you're feeding too much grain, or one calf is eating too much of one thing and not enough of the other, and um, all that avoids rumen upset. So acidosis, highly fermentable hay, even moldy feeds can lead to manure issues that aren't uh, what I'd like to see. Also avoid hard manure. So if you're walking out in the pen, you stumble over a manure clod, you probably have some issues going on there in the type of feed you're giving your calves. Low quality hay might be uh, appropriate so calves don't overconsume, but they certainly need to have something better than that and the ration needs to be improved. Of course, usually if they have water problems, cattle quit drinking water and you should, there might be the water's froze up or you know there's issues with the water, but still, uh, a lack of water can happen and looking at the manure and the hardness might be one way to think about it. So my goal in looking at the manure, when you're out there walking through the pans, looking down at your feet, trying not to step in it, please note that I like to see manure consistently similar to pancake batter. So if that didn't ruin your appetite for pancakes for the day, just think about when you're out looking at calves and the manure that's in the pan, that it's consistent. If you see things of blood or mucus discharge, you might want to encourage a veterinarian to come visit the cow herd because there might be other issues going on at the same time. So again, you want all the patties to look the same. If you see one or two scours out there, that tells me you've got one or two calves that are in distress and more attention needs to provide for them. So some issues here for weaning calves and placing calves on feed to consider with that. I'll uh, end for the day and continue on. Thank you. Thank you, Carl. Uh, we'll now open it up to questions if anyone has questions. Um, Yuri had to jump off early to make it to another meeting, um, but Dr. Sutta and Carl are both here to answer any questions that you may have.
Um, just a reminder that all of the webinars in this series were, have been recorded and are available on our website. I put that link in the chat box. It's the NDSU Extension website and then go under the Livestock Management tab. And on the Topics page, there is a button or a link to the page with all of the recordings for, for this series. One last call if there's any questions. All right, well, thank you for attending. And if you do have any questions, be sure to contact your county agent or one of our specialists. Thanks again.